What does weather mean to you? If you are an astrophotographer, like I am, it is needless to say that lack of clear skies can become an extremely powerful force. As some of you might know, I live in Denmark, and because of the sea climate, the weather here can be unpredictable. It is mid-November, and I haven't seen the stars for almost three weeks already. As someone who spends most of his time out in the darkness to do astrophotography, it just feels mentally challenging not being able to do what you are passionate about. It was another day with the sky full of clouds and I had nothing to look forward to. After I made coffee, I noticed that clouds somehow got brighter while the air was filled with the stormy winds that day. Getting back to my computer, I quickly checked the weather forecast and was greeted by the hope-giving sight as the satellite images showed a noticeable opening in the clouds, which were pushed away from the Danish west coast. Even though the sun sets early during the winter season, the moon was about 90% of its full brightness, meaning I wouldn't be able to enjoy and photograph the night sky in a totally dark sky conditions. With the high chances of getting back home with no good astrophotographs at all, I decided to take the risk. I had a desperate need to be under the stars. I needed to recharge. After a quick stop at the gas station, I was on my way to a small forest lake in the National Park too, which I haven't visited in a while. As I was driving, the sun was hanging just a few degrees above the horizon, even though the clock only showed half past three in the afternoon. I was so excited to see the colorful sunset together with the sky getting free from all the clouds, something that I was missing for the past few weeks. Since there still was one hour till the stars begin to show up, I decided to stop by a small town on the coast of the North Sea and enjoy the last rays of the setting sun. I was greeted by the strong but surprisingly warm wind, whispering sand dunes and a powerful sound of the crushing waves. Walking among the dunes without being pushed left and right by the wind was nearly impossible. As my face and glasses started to get covered with the sea salt, I walked back to my car and carried on, while the evening sky was glowing with the stunning pink colors. The location that I picked for the night was a shallow forest lake which is branded as the cleanest lake in the Tui National Park and popular for bathing. Although, despite it was an unusually warm night, I wasn't planning to take a swim. After a short walk from the parking area and through the forest, I was greeted by the lovely view of the Lake Meadow. It was still windy here, since it is a semi-open area despite being surrounded by lots of trees, but the conditions were nearly perfect for that kind of weather. Before setting my gear up for the shoot, I saw some tree logs lying nearby, so I took one to use as a camping stool, since I don't have any. At this time of the year, the visible part of the Milky Way can be found in the southwest, right on the other side of the lake. Since I have an open landscape, where you both have elements in the foreground and a beautiful tree line, which later would be illuminated by the rising moon, I decided to go with a classic combo of a star tracker, together with my astro-modified Canon EOS 6D and Sigma 14mm f1.8 wide-angle lens. As the stars slowly began to shine in the twilight, like someone was switching Christmas sparkles on one after another in the night sky, I polar aligned my Ioptron sky tracker 
and sat down to enjoy the feeling of being under the stars for the first time for the past three weeks. Even though it's a national park, I heard some uh, gunshots not so long time ago. So I guess people are hunting because it's a hunting season. So uh, I really hope that uh, I will come back home alive from this photo shoot. The moon, looking like a giant light bulb, slowly was reaching the tree line and it already started to illuminate needed part of the landscape. Because I was shooting a vertical panorama, I almost always start with exposing the foreground. As the landscape looked kind of plain, I decided to make a self-portrait to add an object to the foreground. A 10 seconds shutter release was more than enough to run about 5 meters away from the camera and stand still for 15 seconds, while the first photograph was in the process of making. I made three more shots of the Milky Way with slightly different settings to capture the entire dark rift all the way up to the constellation of Cygnus, having the Star Tracker on. Even though it has only been a couple of days after the full moon, the long exposure picked our galaxy quite nicely. Despite strong moonlight, my astro-modified camera even was capable to pick a bit of Hydrogen Alpha's deep red color, along with the rest of that beautiful sunset, which took place one and a half hour ago. The moon was getting higher and higher up in the night sky and I didn't manage to make more astrophotographs that evening. Although spending just a couple of hours out in the nature and under the stars made me feel much better than I felt myself earlier that day. The calmness and inner peace are exactly what I experience every time I go on my astro adventures. Such feelings give me energy and inspiration, not only from the perspective of astrophotography, but also for the daily life. Getting just one picture was more than enough that night. But I already am looking forward for getting back under the stars. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.